Content warning. This series will discuss topics that may bring up painful experiences for you. Please take the time to surround yourself with good medicines. If need be, pause the playback and go for a walk, stretch, have a glass of water, and come back to the show when you feel comfortable. Welcome to the Métis Speaker Series. I'm your host, Darian Kovacs. On this podcast series, we will be exploring learning, healing, and rebuilding within the Métis community. Our goal is to create awareness of and generate discussion about Métis issues, as well as how to heal from and move forward in a healthy way. We hope to reduce Métis invisibility in BC through the personal stories from our Métis community members. This show is brought to you by the Métis Nation of British Columbia and Jelly Marketing. I couldn't help myself. Yeah, Iswael, Tansi, bonjour um, to you and your listeners. This is uh, this is great. So thank you for doing this, number one. Um, I am on Stolo territory, actually. I'm in uh, Chilliwack, so uh, home of the um, Chilkwayak tribe and um, and the Stolo people and home of the Chilliwack Métis Association, which is my home community. We're just off Vetter Road, and we have this tiny little house that we took over last year, and we call it Métis House. So... Um, we've been able to gather here. We put in a medicine wheel garden, and um, it's just been just superb that our community finally has found a home. And uh, we've been so welcomed here by the uh, Stalo people and the leadership at Stalo as well. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, tell us what a, uh, your day looks like, your typical uh, you know day in the life. Yeah, so... Well, my weekend, my whole week, I'd be, I've worked every day for the last two weeks. And uh, we had our, our AGM here at uh, Chilliwack Métis Association on Saturday. So that was fun and elected in a new board. And then I made my way to North Fraser. And uh, so I, I chaired their AGM there as well. And they have a new board as well. So everybody's kind of, there's, they're sort of built in society. So this is a time for, for the AGMs. And uh, I'm just so happy that uh, I'm able to participate in that. I'm the Region 2 Director, so there's actually like six communities in the Lower Mainland. And uh, so I sort of make my way back and forth and and uh, keep a really good relationship with the presidents and because uh, it's all volunteer-based. So I assist them any way I can. And I also advocate for them at MNBC, too. So, um, you know, so, uh, you know I, I have no problem speaking my mind or or uh, trying to meet the needs of the communities. And and things have changed a lot over the years, and we're trying to empower our communities and uh, make sure that they have all the tools that they need to to get the job done. That's uh, that's amazing. And uh, tell us about your hat, and and please describe it for those that are just listening on audio, those that are on video, you can see it, and it's amazing. So tell us what we got going on here. Yeah, so this was made by Lisa Shepard, who's been an ally of um two-spirited people for like ever and ever and um and i've had a relationship with her for quite a few years and and i remember back in uh oh my god it was an ag it was an agm in vancouver and um so it was the metis national council which is our national body was trying to come up with a constitution which they still don't have and um and we're talking about inclusivity so i was working on a lot of stuff with um two-spirited people and um, and the rates of suicide. So, and that was very concerning for me. And I was trying to push the fact that, you know, there is something that we could do. And uh, the president at the time, Clem Chartier, uh, was developing that constitution. And he didn't feel a need that we would um, support or guarantee um, sort of um, identity and what gender identity meant. And, um, and so that really bothered me. So in the AGM, I actually stood up and I came out in front of like 450 people. (laughs) So that was a little stressful on its own. But my point being was that, um, you know, you're talking about at a national level about being an indigenous people that is going to lead, you're going to be leaders in this constitution. And I said, well, if you're really going to be leaders, then why don't you guarantee that that is part of our culture? And that, you know, we're going to guarantee um, um, those rights and the right to be who you are. And he said, you're already protected. You you and them or some." He said something like that. And it really is quite upsetting, you know, that we were already protected under the Constitution of Canada. But that wasn't my point. My point was, you know, why should you run away from your culture? You should be able to run to your culture. 
And we should have that welcoming, those arms should be open um, so that we can help with this um, pandemic and, uh, you know, um, sort of this, the suicide rates. And what are we going to do as a people and as a culture to help, you know, our own? And so that was my point. And Lisa stood up and she was right behind me when I got shot down and uh, supported me. And ever since then, she was an, an ally of mine. She's an amazing beater. Um, you know, and we've had several really in-depth conversations about like how you learned to beat. And she never took any classes or anything like that. And we talked about inherent memories. And that's sort of where the real bond came in between uh, Lisa and myself was there's something inherent inside of you that needs to be um, you know, awoken. How, however, that process happens, it happened to Lisa at a certain period in time, and it, it happened to me, and I think it happens to most two spirited people in in their lifetime, and uh, and that that begins your journey, and to this day, it's still a journey, and uh, and I'm an advocate for other two spirited uh, people. It's awesome. So that the hat has many meanings, yes. I guess, but it always draws me to that story because it really is a wonderful story about looking inside yourself and finding out who you are yeah. and trying to look around you and identify with things. And I think that's um, most important with um, identity yeah. and looking for things that uh, you feel that you belong. Amazing. So how would you say in, in kind of your words and with your advice, how does a nation support the inclusion of two-spirited people uh, and Métis traditions? First of all, you have to make room at the table and, um, you know, and make sure there is a seat, a seat for two spirited people. Um, so uh, MNBC has just recently, um, and I, I chair that committee, which I'm so proud to do. It's a uh, 2SL GTB QQA plus. And, um, and so we have that, you know, that group of people who, and I, I have to just not just toot my horn, but I'm going to toot their horn because we have doctors, we have people, you know, our health clinicians, we have, um, you know, people with their masters and their uh, doctorates. And, and this group of people is so not just educated, but they're so philosophical. And, um, and they are leading the way for MNBC, which I'm just so proud of. We've only had a couple of meetings, but, um, you know, when we're through half of the term, um, I tell you, there's going to be a lot of things happening uh, at MNBC that is really positive for for two spirited people. That is that is incredible. And, and anything else on top of making room at the table, or is that it? Like, let's start there. That's a great. Well, th that's a good place to start because um, you know that sort of leadership, yep. um, you know, encourages other leadership to mimic um, those governance structures. So, including it in the governance structure is important as well. I know there are several communities in, in the Lower Mainland in Region 2 here that have that position on their board. Um, we Our vice president here at Chilliwack is Two-Spirited. Um, myself as regional director. Victoria has a spot on their board. And um, also the president of um, uh, the Fraser Valley Métis Association is also Two-Spirited. So um, we are here. We are part of the artists. We've always been part of the culture. And um, we're just happy to share um, our knowledge and our talents, um, you know, with our community. And basically, you know, that's all we want to do. We just want, we want to be, we seen as, as equals. And um, we do have something to contribute to our culture and to society and, and to our communities. It's awesome. And other piece of uh, advice, how do you think people can work towards gender inclusivity? Hmm. You know, it's a personal journey, I think. And um, the more I, I do talk to people, they, you know, everybody knows somebody, right? Whether it be an, you know, uncle or auntie or, or neighbor or, and I think it's just, um, is getting to know each other and taking that time to know each other. Um, you know, not knowing is, is just, um, is building up that fear and uh, um, just building up, you know, the not knowing, I guess it, it's, um, it's uh, just being visible and having and, and being proud to be visible. And I think that that's what attracts people. People just, you know, tend, tend to come up and say, oh, like nice hat or whatever. And, you know, I always say, well, this is my drag, right? And I tell everyone that's like, you know, well, I've got all kinds of stuff and I, and I love doing it. And the reason I do it is, is so that people do ask or, or they'll, and I don't have a pin on me, but we have a rainbow flag with a, an infinity sign on it. And um, that's a 
curiosity uh, magnet for for a lot of people too. Or they want to ask you questions, right? They want to seek out your knowledge because maybe they don't know and they're struggling with a relationship or a relationship that they cannot have or can have at work that they just don't know how to go about it. I've had... Um, uh, when I had my business here, I had a restaurant here in Chilliwack. And, and I remember the story of a mom coming up to the bar and sitting at the bar. And bartenders are like psychologists anyway. So, And um, she said to me, she said, you know, um, my son just came out. And she says, I'm so fearful and uh, I'm so afraid. And she was, she was like, literally, she was really upset and visibly hey, hey, um, shaken. And, I'm going to pause yeah. you for one sec. If you could, just because sure. your collar is rubbing against your mic there. You're, oh. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to just even just, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, that's. I'm just trying to think of. Yeah, sure. Even if you pull it out, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, even if you pull it forward a little bit, that's. Perfect. Okay, I'll just hang on because I like it. your yeah, collar. I don't. Yeah, I'm just saying. I like yeah. it. Yeah, no, I didn't notice. No, yeah, it's I good. can't hear that. No, it's so. perfect. Okay, yeah, it's awesome. And why you start with um, yeah. the mother? Why do you go with the mother? Yeah. So um, you know, there's this one quick story uh, when I had a restaurant out here in Chilliwack. Um, um, a young lady came. Well, she wasn't that young, like mid you know, mid forties or so. And, and she, uh, she confided in me and she said, you know, she, her son just came out to her and, and she was coming to me for advice. Cause you know, we had known each other and she was a customer here for a long time. And she said, um, you know, I'm so fearful for him. Like, I'm just, I'm so f- afraid that, you know, he's going to be rejected in life and, and all that. And, um, and I just said to her, I said, well, you know what? The one thing as a mom you never have to worry about is you're going to gain another son. Like you won't lose your son to another woman. So you'll always be that number one person in his life. And uh, I just encourage her to be supportive. And those words coming from me was, um, it just seemed to calm her. So so that's, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why I think we do need to be out there because there are people who who are looking for um, just some sort of comfort or or some some words from from somebody who may be a little older who's kind of been through you know the rejection part of it and just being able to be happy um, you know nowadays um, you know later in, in your life you should be proud and open and just be happy like everybody else. So you mentioned um, the pin that you wear sometimes, the infinity symbol yeah. and the rainbow. Uh, tell me about some of the positive impacts of implementing the rainbow uh, in other places like crosswalks um, and ways that you've seen an impact on your community. Yeah, well, you're probably in the Guinness World Records places in Chilliwack of the most rainbow crosswalks everywhere. Wow. But you know what? We have a city council that um, does not, they voted it down. So it's on every other property as far as schools, universities, educational places, but uh, it has yet to be put on uh, any part of of the city, so it's still a struggle okay. out in these areas where it's uh, widely um, conservative. But I, uh, I I was at the University of the Fraser Valley, and yep. we put one in there, and um, it, it all happened so quickly. Um, I spoke to Dave Jimmy as well on First Nations land at uh, Squiala and Derek Epp at uh, Chiacton, and they had already planned that too mm. because there's such a high percentage of two spirited people mm. in Stalo, and we all wanted to stand up for our families and our friends. So as soon as it was rejected at City Hall, the rainbow crosswalks went up on uh, First Nations land in this area, and that's that's a feat that I'm proud to be part of. That that is incredible, um, Louis. I want you to do me a favor. Walk me through your office space here, if you can, right, and maybe just maybe three of the pieces in your office that mean a lot to you and they're really special. Maybe describe it for our listeners and our viewers. And keeping in mind right, that some yeah. of our listeners are no video, audio only, but describe some of the items in your your office there because I think that's really, yeah. really amazing what you've got there. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So it's like home for me. And um, so it's a, a little space. It's probably 12 by 12. And um, like on one side of the wall, these are some of the blankets yep. that uh, I got blanketed by um, Stalo. Yep. And uh, behind me are lots of books. And these are my actually um, books from my MBA. Yep. Uh, there's my degree from Simon Fraser University. Uh, of course, um, a lot of the items are personal. I've got my medicines all here. Um, we have a medicine wheel garden that's right outside of my uh, window right here. And on this side, uh, my collection of sashes. So, Amazing. And this is a, just a storage space for a Red River cart, which usually sits outside um, of, of this office space. And um, 
but we were using it for our AGM on the weekends, so it was easy just to to bring it in my office and and hide it here. So it's amazing. Um, so it's uh, multifunctional as a storage it's space great. as well. I don't mind, but it makes me feel really good. And and I love that you asked me about that because it's um yeah I, I like to share those things as well. It it just makes me feel cozy. It's like <laughs> arms are around me when I have my culture like on each side of me. So amazing. it gives me strength. So those that um, haven't heard the term blanketed before, and or those that maybe have heard yeah. it but have, don't know what it means, what does it mean? And, and what, what happened when you got blanketed? Yeah, I was a witness both times. One was um, New Year's Day. We always have a salmon ceremony. Uh, we share, it's actually a stalo ceremony, but, but a lot of Métis people are down there as well because we're all community. And uh, the other one was just recently um, when we found out about Kamloops. So... Uh, we were invited to, I was invited to be a witness at uh, some of the ceremony there. Uh, they, they actually sent a canoe from Squaw Reserve because a lot of um, uh, relatives of, of Squaw went, went to that, uh, that school in Kamloops and, and never came home. So they actually took like two canoes and, um, and they paraded it around the grounds and it was, it was to collect the spirits that were there and bring them home. So it was super moving and it was really powerful to be part of that. And, um, you know, it's from our grandmothers too. It's who we are. So ceremony as well as culture, I think is, is really important, um, to nurture our soul and also to guide us in the decisions, uh, that, that we make day to day, how we treat our family and, and how we treat each other. Wow. And, and tell me about the sashes and what they mean to you. I see you have a, a beautiful collection, all, all different yeah. kind of colors and styles, even one that has SFU written right on there. Tell me what those mean to you. Yeah. Yeah. That was graduation, the SFU one, but um, some are just uh, different. There's uh, We do have a women's sash now. We have got another, it's uh, like sashing our warriors. That's more purple. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have, and this is news, we just got the funding um, for a uh, two-spirit sash. So there's actually, um, I think, 120 that are going to be released um, in the next probably two months. Um, so that's going to be really cool. Um, yeah. And I think it's just reflective of where we're moving, you know, that the culture is, uh, we're, we're not just a diverse people, but we're also dynamic and that's how we've survived this whole time. So having that there to either comm commemorate, um, occasions, um, or to honor people, I think, um, the sashes is, is, is a useful tool. It always has been. Its history is of a belt. Um, the threads were used to like, um, so to repair, um, it was used uh, to pull things out of ditches, um, to keep your pants up, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for all kinds of things. So um, it's it's just another extension of, um, you know, our physical, the physical part of us. So to, to honor it that way and 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 uh, have it change throughout the years, um, that's why I love the collection, because it makes me always honor those different things um, that are very meaningful in our lives. It's amazing. Uh, so, Louis, I, I want to request if you uh, are comfortable doing two things. One, uh, mm -hmm. I'd love to, again, look right in the camera, speak right into people's, you know, AirPods, mm -hmm. earbuds, headphones, or maybe kitchens, wherever they are listening to the show right now. Those mm -hmm. that um, are hearing this right now and saying, man, I want to know how I can be more supportive of two-spirited people who are maybe in my life or not yet in my life. Uh, what's an, a word of encouragement for them? What is something they can do? What's maybe like a baby step or something they can do? Yeah. Um, and then the second thing I'm going to ask you to do is if you could speak to those that are too spirited and maybe feeling um, maybe ashamed or or quieted uh, of that. Uh, and um, I mean, you maybe give some encouragement for them as well. So those two uh, words of encouragement would yeah. be amazing. Well, for starters, it's, you know, the easiest thing is to be an ally right? Be an ally. Like the people that you know, you don't know if they're struggling or not, but if you know that they're having difficulty, reach out and say that, you know, it's okay. And I'm here for you. Those probably, you know, are the best words you can ever say is like, I'm here for you. Mm. Go to a pride parade, go and see the culture, see the, the amount of different people that are out there that makes up this really diverse and, and unique group of people. Um, fly the flag. Like get a pen, you know, it's, it's fun to be uh, colorful and it's really fun um, to be part of it. And, um, you know, for those who are struggling with it, 
seek out those allies. Make sure you always have allies around, um, you know, and educate people. That's mm -hmm. that, you know, it's it's part of your healing. It's part of your journey is to let people understand who you are and uh, always be proud because there there are people um, out there who are always going to um, stop you from that growth. And that growth comes from within. It, it is your spirit. It's who you are. Whatever you need to do to get connected to your culture, it's a big part of what your culture has always been. Two-spirited people have always been a part of that. There's many, many writings out there and uh, professors and, and great books and groups. Um, we're starting a queer cafe out here as well. Attend those things. They, it empowers you to be around your own. And uh, that goes for your own culture and uh, your own spirituality and uh, your own gender identity, whatever that may be. That is amazing. Thank you, Louis, for those two great words of encouragement. Uh, those mm -hmm. that um, maybe are just on this journey and starting it and they want to reach out to you, where can they find you? Not to flood your inbox or your DMs, yeah, but, that's okay. but where can people reach out to you? Yeah, they can just uh, connect the um, to the Métis Nation BC website and look under uh, governance, uh, regional directors. I'm in Region 2, so I'm in Chilliwack. And uh, so uh, uh, my email's there, um, you know, my phone number's out there. And don't hesitate. Uh, I'm here Monday to Friday. I work on weekends as well. So if you're struggling with anything and uh, you think that I can help in any which way, uh, I'm here. That is amazing. And, and I think to yeah. end on those words, um, Louis just said to themselves, I'm here. I'm here for you. If you want to do anything, maybe that's a, a great uh, you know, word of encouragement for this season for you. I'm here for you. And you can pass that lifeline, that word of encouragement to others. That's, that's pretty awesome. Absolutely. Thank you for uh, leading by example for all of us here. Uh, you know, I'm still learning myself. So I'm still on that journey. Um, just, you know, maybe a couple of years ahead. That's all. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us here on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chimikwich. This has been the Métis Speaker Series podcast. I'm Darian Kovacs. Thanks to the Métis Nation of British Columbia for making this possible with funding provided by the Civil Forfeiture Office's Indigenous Healing Stream. You can listen to all of our episodes learn more about the podcast, and sign up to the Métis Nation of BC newsletter to stay up to date on Métis news at MétisPodcastSeries.ca. You can find out more about the music we're playing by Love Life by visiting SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash lovelifeofficial, L-U-V-L-Y-F official, and link in the show notes for your convenience. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast listening device. See you again soon. Mina Kawapa Mitten. Thank you, Marcy, for listening. <laughs>